the wait is finally over. For months the photography world has been filled with rumors, leaks, blurred images, and endless speculation. Every week new information appeared online. Some parts seemed believable. Some felt impossible. But now everything is real. Sony is about to reveal the A7V. And this announcement is not a small update. It is a major step forward. The official date is December 2nd, and photographers around the world have already marked their calendars. This release is going to dominate conversations for weeks, not only because the A7V is new but because of what it promises. It brings new sensor technology. It brings new video abilities. And above all, it brings a new level of AI autofocus that many people never expected to see in the mid-range A7 lineup. The first detail that shocked many people is the price. Sony is targeting the A7V at around $3,000. This instantly places it in a competitive position. It sits right between affordable enthusiast cameras and higher-end professional systems. But the real debate begins when you look deeper at the specs. This camera records 4K at 120 frames per second, but with a crop. It uses a brand new 33 megapixel partially stack sensor, something Sony has never given to the A7 series before. And because this sensor design is new, it changes almost everything about how the camera performs. Before understanding why this is such a big deal, you need to know the history. For years the Sony A7 series has been the trusted workhorse for hybrid shooters. Wedding photographers used it. Content creators relied on it. Documentary filmmakers appreciated its flexibility. The A7 IV stayed in so many camera bags because it was dependable. It delivered good image quality. It had strong video features. And it offered great value. But technology moves forward fast. Competitors caught up. Some even pushed ahead. The A7 IV began to feel old. Rolling shutter performance looked outdated. Autofocus improvements slowed down. The camera remained good, but it no longer excited people. Sony listened. They knew the A7 lineup needed something fresh. They needed to show that the A7 series still leads the hybrid market. That is why the A7V brings a new 33 megapixel partially stacked sensor. This one decision changes the entire identity of the camera. A fully stacked sensor is much more expensive. It is like having a supercar with a supercharged engine. Everything is fast, everything reacts instantly, and the performance feels premium. A partially stacked sensor is like having a turbo upgrade. It does not reach the absolute highest levels of speed. But it is still far ahead of a normal sensor. It offers faster readout. It reduces rolling shutter. It allows better autofocus calculations. And most importantly, it gives you these advantages without pushing the price into the professional flagship category. Sony is the first company to offer a high-resolution 33-megapixel version of this partially stacked technology. Other cameras such as the Nikon Z63 and Panasonic S12 use Sony-made 24-megapixel partially stacked sensors. But this 33-megapixel version is new. No other camera brand has it. This means Sony is giving the A7V an exclusive advantage. Higher resolution. Faster processing. Better performance. And the camera still stays within the mid-range price class. This new sensor also allows extremely fast continuous shooting. The A7V reaches 30 frames per second when using the electronic shutter in 14-bit RAW. This is a huge upgrade from the A7IV, which was limited to 10 frames per second. And even with the mechanical shutter, the A7V can shoot 10 frames per second. But the bigger upgrade is a new feature many photographers have been asking for, pre-capture mode. Pre-capture works like this. When you half press the shutter button, the camera begins to store a rolling buffer of images. The moment you fully press the shutter, the camera includes several frames taken before the actual click. This means you can capture the exact moment a bird takes off, or a runner begins a sprint, even if your reaction is slightly late. Wildlife shooters have been begging for this feature. Sony finally delivered it in the A7V. 
Another major improvement is stabilization. The A7 IV offered 5.5 stops of in-body image stabilization. That was respectable. But the A7V increases this to 8 stops. 3 extra stops might not sound like much, but in real shooting it is a massive difference. With 8 stops of Stabilization, you can shoot at shutter speeds as slow as half a second and still get sharp images. This opens creative doors for handheld night photography, handheld long exposures, and low-light scenes where you previously needed a tripod. This upgrade alone will impress many professionals. But all these improvements are only part of the story. The biggest change, the one that truly separates the A7V from its predecessor, is the AI autofocus system. The A7V includes the same dedicated AI processor found in the Sony A12 and A7RV. This deep learning chip is not just a small improvement. It transforms the autofocus system into something far smarter and far more predictive. The previous A7 IV used 759 phase detection points. It was already excellent. But it lacked a dedicated AI processor. The new chip in the A7V enables advanced subject recognition, predictive tracking, and body pose estimation. This is not just marketing language. It means the camera can identify human faces, eyes, and bodies with far greater confidence. It can also detect animals and birds more accurately. And now it can even detect insects. This was not possible on the A7 IV. The AI system not only locates eyes, it also tracks the head and the body. This means if a person turns away from the camera, or if an animal moves suddenly, the A7V continues tracking with stability. Sony says that tracking performance improves by 60% for humans and 40% for animals and birds compared to the A7 IV. That is a huge boost. And because the camera predicts body movement, it stays locked onto the subject even when visibility becomes difficult. It does not stop there. The A7V can also track cars, trains, and airplanes with the same advanced tracking logic. And real-time eye autofocus works during video as well. This is important for wedding videographers, event shooters, documentary filmmakers, and solo creators. You can shoot an interview, record a wedding entrance, capture fast movement, or film unpredictable action. The camera focuses automatically, and it does it with confidence. This lets the shooter concentrate on framing, composition, and timing instead of worrying about missed focus. Now let's move to video. This is where things get more complex. The A7V records 4K at 60 frames per second with no crop, using oversampling from the full sensor width. This is a major upgrade from Sony's FX2, which has a crop at 4K 60. In this case, the A7V actually outperforms Sony's own cinema camera. That will surprise many people. But it gets better. Sony confirmed that the A7V can also record 4K at 120 frames per second. The only limitation is that 4K 120 comes with a crop. We do not yet know the exact crop factor. However, the Sony A12 uses a 1.1x crop at 4K 120, which is very small. If the A7V has something similar, most people will be satisfied. High frame rate video is extremely useful for slow motion. And even with a slight crop, it remains a valuable feature. But Sony made one decision that will disappoint some users. The A7B does not support open gate recording. Open gate uses the full height of the sensor. This gives more flexibility for reframing in post. Canon offers it. Panasonic offers it but Sony decided not to include it in the A7V. For filmmakers and vertical content creators, this will be a noticeable difference. Sony may be trying to keep some video features exclusive to their cinema line. The body design is another point many people have been curious about. Sony decided to reuse the body shape from the A7RV. This is good news for most creators because the A7RV body is spacious, comfortable, and well-balanced. The A7V includes the fully articulating free-angle 3.2-inch touchscreen. This is great for vloggers and solo operators because it allows framing from any angle. For storage, Sony gives you one SD slot and one hybrid slot that accepts SD or CFX Express Type-A. 
Some shooters hoped for dual CF Express slots, but this is the mid-range A7 series, not a flagship. Sony wants to keep the price under control. And SD cards are still widely used and affordable. The ports have also been updated. The A7V includes dual USB-C ports. And Sony finally removed the outdated micro USB port. This small change makes the camera feel modern and avoids the frustration of slower connections. Now, every camera launch triggers one major question, how does it compare to the competition? In this case, all eyes are on the newly announced Canon R6 Mark III. Canon did not hold back with this model. And the comparison between Sony and Canon is very interesting. Both cameras have similar resolution. Sony has 33 megapixels. Canon has 32.5 megapixels. But Sony's sensor is partially stacked while Canon's is not. This gives Sony an advantage in readout speed and rolling shutter control. For action photography, that advantage matters. Canon shoots up to 40 frames per second with the electronic shutter. That is faster than Sony's 30 frames per second. Canon also offers 20 frames of pre-continuous shooting. Canon wins in pure burst speed. But Sony's 30 frames per second is still extremely fast. For most photographers, it is more than enough. Video is where Canon takes a big lead. Canon records 7K at up to 60 frames per second in 12-bit raw light. It also has open gate recording. These video specs are extremely strong, especially at this price level. Sony is limited to 4K 60 uncropped and 4K 120 cropped. So for pure filmmaking, Canon clearly wins.